Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Pack one, pick one. We did open a pretty decent rare in Soul Shatter. Just a soul removal spell, even if it doesn't have any particular synergy. Um, we are passing, let's see, Acquisitions Experts, pretty good too. Balagid Recovery, one of the better dual-faced cards. And then some other good cards here, Core Celebrant for the Life Gain deck, Rabbit Bite Removal. I think I'm still fine taking the Soul Shatter. I wouldn't necessarily fault anyone for wanting to take like a Balagat Recovery here, or even Acquisitions Expert, if you really like some of the tribal synergies. But uh, yeah, I'll take the Soul Shatter. It's splashable, instant speed removal. Can't really go wrong with it. All right, second pack. A rare is missing, and the spec is kind of medium. Like the only common I'm excited about, I guess, is like an expedition champion. The rest is all pretty bad, but I do like Umara Wizard a decent amount, just as a, a nice dual faced card. So that's probably what I'm gonna take here, and then who knows, we might end up like blue black, party kind of control wizards which is typically a good mix of wizards and rogues. Sometimes struggles to pick up warriors and uh, clerics, but doesn't have to be a full party deck. And again, we can still potentially splash Soul Shatter, especially if we end up green. Interesting. Well, there's some good blue and black cards in this pack. I don't think Shadow's Verdict is like particularly amazing. Although I would maybe play it if I ended up in a more controlling deck. Soft Consumption, not a good dual face card, but I think I'm just taking an Into the Royal. Second pack, Umara Wizard. Third pack, Into the Royal. It's probably a good sign for blue. So, yeah, let's take the Into the Royal, and then we're by no means committed to black. Uh, there's no other color that really jumps out here besides blue. Pack number four. I guess the two cards that jump out at me are the Infiltrator and Field Research, which are both pretty decent. Of course, Infiltrator in blue-black, if we end up with a couple of rogue synergies, is going to be quite good. Field Research doesn't necessarily care about the rogue synergies, and again, if we don't end up blue-black, and Abandoned Soul Shatter could still be great in any blue deck, really. So let's say we pivot into maybe a blue-green kicker deck somehow, or blue-red wizards. I'll still be happy with the field research. Whereas Infiltrator might have slightly more upside in a rogue synergy deck, but it's going to be probably a little bit worse outside of it. So I'll take the, the field research for now. All right, although now we do see... Shadow Stinger as another potential rogue payoff card. And a Skyclave Plunder, which is also just decent card draw. I uh, don't mind the Cascade Seer has a fine 4-drop that lets us scry a bunch. So, I've got a few options. Um, I don't feel particularly compelled to take Shadow Stinger, even though, again, blue-black rogues could be a thing. So between Cascade Seer and Plunder, I think I take Plunder even though Cascade Seer would be fine too. I'm a little bit worried about not having a ton of creatures at the moment, so that's maybe something we'll need to address. All right. Pack number six, we still see a Shepherd of Heroes and McKinley Stampede in the pack, so, you know, maybe white was open all along and we just now noticed. Anticognition, not the biggest fan. Same with Duelist, so... Yeah, I think... Uh, I'll take a Shepherd. This doesn't strike me like a McKinney Stampede deck. And maybe if we end a blue-white party, I'll be happy with Shepherd. Just keep our options open here. So we're definitely blue, but second color is still up for grabs. Pretty happy with Cascade Seer here. Take another blue card to solidify our blue pick. And uh, yeah, this is going to be pretty good in any deck if we end up in a party deck, of course, it's going to be even better. 
but just a 3-3 that lets us cry one or two is totally fine here. And then pick number eight, that's a pretty late Gnarlet Colony. So now we can speculate on green a little bit in case we end a blue-green kicker. Not a great fan of Cleric of Chill Depths, even though it's a Cleric in blue, which you don't always get. So it could be good for party purposes. Guide Beast is not particularly great and uh, don't have many warriors, so I'll take a colony. Again, keep our options open. Dip our toes into green just in case. Now we're seeing a little bit of everything. Some good red cards that are playable. A rogue in black and a stomper, which can be fine in green, although typically better in like the landfall colors, which blue green isn't really. So I think I'll take Skulker here over Cleric in case we do end up blue black. And I'll take a Murasa Brute as a filler three drop in case we end up blue green, since we're pretty creature light at the moment. Don't necessarily expect to play spare supplies. So we've got a white card, two black cards, and two green cards. And uh, it's not clear which one of those we're going to play. Guess I'll take a Deliberate just to make sure we have enough playables at the end of the day. Could also take a Snarecaster for the sideboard, but I'm not even sure if I'm going to play green. Alright, Mind Drain's actually playable if we're in the black. Negate for the sideboard, probably less impactful. Although also an option. And very happy to see a second Cascades here this late, so... Yeah, I mean, blue blue seems open, at least in this seat. So we'll see what the next pack brings. Another Soul Shatter, apparently. There's also Royal Eruption, although we haven't taken any red cards so far. So I think second Soul Shatter makes more sense. Yeah, I don't have any life gain synergy for Sign of the Swarm. Geyser Mage is fine, Field Research would be okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, we don't have much removal, so I think we just take Shatter number 2 here. Hope to wheel Geyser Mage or Field Research. And again, could technically splash double Soul Shatter. And yeah, I mean, I'll take a Hagra Mauling here. More removal. There's some fine blue and black creatures that we can hope to wheel. Stalker, Diviner, Skydancer, especially if we end up with a bit of a mill theme. I am a little bit concerned about potential win conditions. But uh, for now we'll just take removal. Finding like a Roost of Drakes would be, of course, ideal. A win condition that's difficult to interact with, that can provide a lot of value over time. But for now, double soul shatter hangar mauling. All our removal spells are rares. Probably take Diviner now. We have a few wizards with Cascade Seer to synergize with Diviner. Gives us a 3 2 flyer. Another field research would be okay. Infiltrator could be fine, although we're pretty light on the rogues. Only have one rogue at the moment. So, yeah, I think we take Diviner. Uh, Malachi Rebirth could also be fine. Would also like to pick up some more 2-drop creatures, so additional Skulkers in black are definitely among the better 2-drops we can find. Do I want a Cleric of Chill Depths? I guess I'll take it. It does help with my Cascades here. Scry draws more cards with Skyclave Plunder, gives me a 2-drop, which we Definitely could use Dreadworm is also a consideration as a win condition, although it is not one of the more exciting ones and doesn't have any party synergy. Kind of looking at different colors in case we wanted to splash black, although at this point with Hagra Mauling, we're pretty committed to black. There's nothing that really jumps out as being super powerful. So I'll take a Cleric. And... Shadow's Verdict, I mean, that's the second one we've seen so far. We could end up with a decent control deck since we don't have much cheap stuff. 
So Verdict could actually be okay here. Arisen Riptide could also have its moments, but it's not like we have that many kicker cards. Yeah, I think I take the Verdict and then... Or this kind of weird blue-black control deck. I mean, Soul Shatter takes care of the big things, so does Hagar Mauling. And then we've got Verdict for the small stuff. Although if we don't draw on the Verdict, we could be in trouble. Probably don't need a second Mind Drain. Take a Subtle Strike in case we end up with a few more creatures. Alright, so this pack doesn't have much for us, sadly. A bunch of green cards, red cards, white cards. Do I take a negate for the sideboard? I mean, I don't really see myself splashing any of these. Seems a bit late to pivot into a different color. So yeah, I guess I'll take a negate. So I'm a little bit worried about getting enough playables and enough creatures and win conditions. But uh, it's kind of hard to pivot out of blue-black at this point. And then I guess I'm just hate drafting a rabbit bite since, yeah, there's just nothing for me here. It's funny how almost all of our black cards are rares. All right, we did wheel field research at least, so we get some more card draw. Don't think Shadow Cat's going to be very good in our deck, sadly. Yeah, I mean, we do need some creatures eventually, but I guess card draw and removal is a good starting point. Unless we're up against a mill deck. Although I haven't seen too many mill cards go around. Is this a deck where we splash a Kazandu Stomper? Or an Ascetic? As a win condition, maybe? But I hope not. Alright, Living Tempest. I guess will have to be our win condition. As much as I like Malaki Rebirth, I just need more creatures. And uh, nothing here. Maybe I should take Brute, although I don't see myself pivoting out of blue-black at this point. Alright, Riptide maybe good enough here with a couple field researches to enable it. Alright, hopefully in the last pack we can find some more creatures. Well, there's some more removal. Feed the Swarm and Deadly Alliance. Would also love this Dazim Royal Mage, which seems great in my deck as both a 2-drop and a way to get back removal in the late game. So, do I take a Royal Mage or do I take probably a Deadly Alliance? Yeah, I think this one's close. I think I'm gonna still go with Alliance. We do have a few ways to make it cheaper. Uh, Feed the Swarm is good, but we don't have a ton of life gain to offset it. And now I'll definitely take Dazim Royal Mage as a way to recur our powerful instants and sorceries in the late game. Sentinel would actually be a fine win condition as well, kind of hoping to wield this, or maybe a sneak. And that's going to give us both a potential 2-drop or a powerful kicker card in the late game, which also makes my Risen Riptides a bit better. And a Wizards for Umara Wizard. Can't hurt. Uh, Chilling Trap versus Dreadworm, I guess, is the pick. Can we wheel Dreadworm? I mean, there's definitely a possibility. Second Canopy Bailoth we're passing in rapid succession makes me a little sad. Yeah, I mean, Chilling Trap should be okay. How many wizards do I have? Good Royal Mage, double Cascade Seer, Umara Wizard. I've got a few of them. Uh, maybe actually... Nah, I'll take the Chilling Trap. We also have the Expedition Diviner as an extra wizard. Ooh, wow, what a pack. Ah oh man, I wish I could take all three here. Windrider, Falconer, Into the Royal. Probably Falconer. We just need more creatures. This is a pretty good finisher. I've got plenty of kicker cards to go with it. Uh, Windrider would also be excellent, although I'm a little bit worried about decking and not having enough actual win conditions and just drawing a bunch of removal and running out. Yeah, I'll take Falconer. Don't think we're going to wheel any blue cards here that we're interested in, but so be it. And is this another Falconer in a subsequent pack? I'll take it. All right, maybe I don't have to play a Living Tempest after all. And then Deadly Alliance isn't really a 5-drop. 
and wizard is kind of a land. So I can probably still get away with another 5 drop here. More Baloths. And probably another Diviner. Or do I want Disciple? Disciple doesn't seem great because I lack cheap creatures to sacrifice to it. Diviner's fine. I don't think I have too many 4 drops. Although I'm a little bit worried about my early game. It's not like Chilling Trap is all that useful without a Wizards to go with it. And yeah, I'll, a Blood Beckoning I'll take. Another Chilling Trap could be fine. Someone in blue-red is probably going to be pretty happy with those two. But uh, Beckoning to recycle a couple Falconers in a late game to make sure we don't run out of win conditions is good. And another Royal Mage, 8th pick, I'll take it. Don't think this is a great Infiltrator deck, but uh, seems like a great Royal Mage deck. Alright, pretty happy with where we ended up eventually. Don't have a ton of black cards, but I've got some good removal at least. And blue seems quite open. Ooh, wow. We already have double research, I'll take a Geyser Mage. Pretty happy with those two. I mean, with those two blue cards wheeling, there's even a chance we get back the Wind Rider or into the Royal. Although maybe someone will take them because there's nothing else for them in the pack. But it's not impossible. There don't seem to be a ton of blue drafters at the table. I mean, we got a rare draft to get our value. Or maybe take like a war leader. So we don't have to play against it. The win condition in the deck, we've got double falconer, a way to get them back from the graveyard. Plenty of card draw removal to outvalue our opponents. Double Royal Mage is going to be great too. A Royal Mage can get back Blood Beckoning, so we have a steady supply of creatures. Cleric as a sideboard card in case we're lacking cheap creatures against an aggro deck, perhaps. Does Yasharn's passive do anything in limited? It prevents people from sacrificing spare supplies, as I've uh, had to find out the hard way. All right. So this is kind of what we're working with. Probably gonna put Mind Drain in the sideboard and bring it in in slower matchups. I think Risen Riptide's fine, I've got a few kicker cards. Cleric of Chill Depths, also going to be a sideboard card, I think. Uh, how many rogues do we have? Not that many, right? Although, I'm probably still happy having a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two that enables some of my party synergies. Subtle Strike is also kind of medium since we don't have many creatures to go with it, but I'll definitely sideboard it in if our opponents have many 1-toughness creatures. And then... In terms of wizards, we've got a decent amount. This is kind of a removal. And then Umara wizards also land. I don't have to play Skyclave Plunder, but I think I will. And then I think I want 17 lands plus the two dual faced cards, so I can maybe cut Deliberate. And then run this. So don't have a whole lot going on at 2 mana. But we can also play into the royal if needed. And then... Probably just enough creatures to get by. Could maybe cut one Cascade Seer. In favor of a Cleric for curve purposes. I guess I could make that swap. Problem is, like, all the 2 drops we play end up dying to Shadow's Verdict whereas 4 drops are safe, but yeah, maybe just for curve we'll add a cleric back, and then we have a few sideboard options here. Negates could also come in. 
So we can kind of work with those after sideboard as well. And then the mana base. I do need double black for some of these. Only really need double blue on turn 4 for a kicked into the royal. And then turn 5. So 8 swamps and then 9 islands plus Umara wizards is probably okay. Although I could potentially go 7, 7, 10. And then Hagar Mulling can also be played as a swamp if needed. Yeah. I mean, our deck is functional without black mana, but it's not really functional without blue mana. And a single black will get us pretty far. So that seems okay. Yeah, I think this is the deck. So let me export to Arena, and we'll switch on over. Be on the play. I uh, don't love this hand, but do we hate it enough to send it back? Basically need to draw two lands here, one for Riptide and one for Seer to help us find black mana. Shadow's Verdict does have some comeback potential, assuming we can draw two swamps, which we're not super likely to by turn 5. I think this is a mulligan. This is better. And then do I bottom an island or... A Royal Mage. How does Royal Mage line up against the opponent's creatures here? Fisher Wizard, Vanguard, Brushfire Elemental Pack Beasts, and then a couple Electromancers at three is what we're up against. So Royal Mage blocks a few of those. Yeah, I think I bought him a land here. All right, good. And then I should probably just run this out. Yeah, I kind of dislike open deck lists because now I got to pay so much attention to all possible outcomes and it kind of takes away from the natural game of magic. And there's a rock slide sorcerer which could punish me for running out royal mage early. Yeah, we'll just attack and play Diviner. I think there's a Spark Mage in there too. Right. At least we draw a card. Probably don't need triple black. And then I'm fine staying back now. Although we could lose the royal mage to a spark mage. Alright, adventure. That one neatly dies to my soul shatter. Probably kill it now. And then we can research again. Having the Blood Beckoning means I'm not too worried if the Falconer dies. Paragon finds a bunch of stuff. Although at least we have a second Soul Shatter here. So yeah, some pretty cool red-green party synergies. Yeah, Falconer makes sense. Could also keep up Soul Shatter to get the Minotaur off the table and just play Riptide. Don't hate that, I suppose. Also represents a uh, kicked into the Royal. And then next turn I can Falconer and still keep up Soul Shatter. 
Yeah, I played the previous Soul Shatter Sorcery speed because of all the party synergies that I didn't want to have any part in. Although, I maybe could have still uh, kept it up at instant speed. All right. Probably go Falconer Cleric. And keep up Islands, which represents our one mana trick. In terms of removal, we've seen Rebuke already. There's also Rabbit Bite. Sorcerer Spark Mage. There's a Songman Treachery, Kazul's Fury in the mana base as well. So those are all cards we potentially need to keep in mind. Alright, they also have Inordinate Rage as a comma trick. And a Might of Morassa, so two pump spells we need to be worried about. Yeah, we'll make some blocks here. I do have Beckoning, so I don't really mind if Falconer dies. Of course, we would prefer not to lose it. Yeah, I think this is fine. And then Killing Paragon makes more sense because it has all those extra creature types. And if I lose Royal Mage, I'm also not too upset because then Beckoning can get it back and Royal Mage gets back Beckoning, so it's an entire loop. And if this was like a second main Spark Mage, they'll only have Wizards in place and enough to finish off the Riptide. Could maybe see like Pump Spell on Paragon and then Spark Mage. I mean, that wasn't too bad for me, all things considered. Opponents down to one card in hand. Can play Kicked Research. And, uh... Yeah, I mean... It's not bad. Do I even need Shadow's Verdict as a question? I guess I'll take it. And then I'm happy jumping with a Cleric now, if needed. Log well, we can Deadly Alliance, since it doesn't die to Verdict. And a Geyser Mage. and trying to make sense of this attack. Yeah, you know, I think they figured it out. And then do we run out Geyser Mage unkicked? I think we do. Gotta keep bluffing my trick. Alright, Ponon scoops it up. So that game went pretty well for us. Double Soul Shatter definitely did a lot of work and then we had the card advantage to back it up. So do I want to make any changes? Let's take a look at their potential sideboard options. Let's see Akum Hellhound, Cleansing Wildfire, Broken Wings, that's probably going to come in to kill my flyers. Um, and a Nessel Zandicon could also come in. So Broken Wings to kill my Flyers, that's about it. 
Uh, I think Mind Ring could be okay. It's good against the Coma Tricks and it can maybe snipe a Broken Wings if we don't have a Flyer in play yet. Although on the draw it's gonna maybe be a little sketchier. I think I like one Cleric, but I'm not gonna bring in the second one necessarily. Yeah, 3-3 three, three versus a 3-2 Flyer is also interesting. They still both trade for the 3-2 the Wizards. Don't think I need Negate, it's mostly big creatures I'm concerned with and not big non-creature spells. Subtle Strike doesn't seem needed. Could see shaving like a Shadow's Verdict maybe. Yeah, an early Verdict can maybe deal with the early party enablers before the Minotaur and the uh, the other big creature comes out. But it might be a little bit too late on the draw. And then can probably hang on to Umara Wizard for now. Don't hate Mind Drain. While well, we can still get good value. And then next turn I'll probably go Tapped Wizard plus Soul Shatter. Alright, gets rid of two lanes. And misses Land Drop for the turn. And then now Diviner looks good. Could see Minotaur. Spark Mage could also be bad for me. Alright, Adventure instead. Alright, glad I held on to the Soul Shatter. So I might want to kill this to slow down any... Uh, party cost reduction effects. And then now we still have Wizard as a win condition, so that's nice. Don't feel quite comfortable enough to attack with my Diviner. Do I want to take six? Not really, but I also don't want to chump. Skulker doesn't have any rogue to go with it at the moment. Yeah, we'll probably just end up bouncing the Bailoth the next turn. Just gotta watch out for like a uh, Kazul's Fury or act of treason to kill me. So this would be a good time to start drawing some of our card advantage. Plunder, double, field research. Blood beckoning could be good too. And I'll take Falconer. They might have a broken wings in hand. Alright, it's a second main Minotaur. Alright, I mean, at least I can Skulker keep up Royal. Probably can't afford to make any uh, aggressive attacks now. I don't have any flash rogues in my deck that they have to be concerned about. But having into the royal to maybe blow up a comma trick is nice. If they don't attack I'm just not gonna do anything. It's 
this block okay? It does mean the Paragon can start attacking me. Could also just trade for Umara Wizard, but Umara Wizard's a better win condition late. And I kind of want him to use a combo trick here, almost. Ooh, Chilling Trap is excellent. So definitely want to just hang back now. Does this make sense? And then shrink down Baeloth. Let me check if there's any instant speed landfall cards. I don't think so. Don't want to give it flying. Or is it not a May ability? I guess it's not. So this could be bad in case of a broken wings, I suppose. Yeah, this might be like a Might of Morassa or Kazul's Fury. Rage. Alright, so we'll let Rage resolve. I think I get to have the Scry 1, but I want to draw with Chilling Trap. And then we'll probably end up casting it into the Royal as well. Kazul's Fury. If they kill my wizard, then I don't get to draw from Diviner. So Kazul's Fury sacking either Paragon or Baeloth, I guess, could make sense. But this Dazim Royal Mage we just drew is pretty nice. Can get back. Probably Soul Shatter here. Alright, so we both had two instants. And as the dust settles, it's Paragon. Ooh. Kicked Field Research, don't mind if I do. I mean, I kind of want to kick Field Research and then kick Royal Mage getting back Research, but that might be a little greedy. Although I'm fine chumping Paragon. Just gotta watch out for a potential Act of Treason type effect. Seven, eight. We'll wait on the Royal Mage. Late game is taking over. So how many cards do I have left? 18. Um, still have a Blood Beckoning in the deck eventually. Chilling Trap could be powerful. Could just go for Soul Shatter. Or another Field Research. We'll go for the Greedy play here. I guess I gotta watch out for the Act of Treason here killing me. I would go to one. Yeah, maybe the field research was not needed here since we were drawing Diviner. Just want to make sure that we don't end up like drawing a few lands in a row and we end up uh, not taking over the late game all the way. We also haven't seen Might of Marasa yet. I'm definitely blocking. Alright, so 
so how much mana? Nine. So if I play this kicked, I'm pretty likely to also play Diviner. Uh, I've sideboarded out my Shadows Verdict, so the only other double black card is Hagra Mauling. I guess it's still worth it to keep up double black if I can. Six. Alright, I mean, I'll take it. A little bit scared of decking here. Alright, Rebuke. So how much mana do I have? 10, 11. I think I might plunder before playing Diviner. Because let's say I go Diviner into Plunder. 10, 11. I would only have two mana left, which is probably not enough for anything significant. And then if they have the Song Mat Treachery, I would be dead. Whereas Plunder could maybe find two cheap things or a removal spell, which would keep me safe. Alright, those are great. Don't necessarily want to bounce Paragon. Also, I do want to play Kick Beckoning. Hmm, I guess maybe I should still play Kick Geyser Mage, weirdly enough. Just so I don't die to the treachery. And that way I get to keep Beckoning Kicked. Yeah, I think that's the safest play. They get a little bit of value, but hopefully Beckoning can outvalue them enough. Alliance is great too. Get back a Royal Mage and probably a Falconer. So this is 7-8 mana. So I can go Diviner, keep up Alliance. These are all Wizards. And then Royal Mage can get back Beckoning again. And we should be able to take over pretty quickly. Yeah, just a mere presence of Songmat Treachery in the opponent's deck has to command a lot of respect. Is this a situation where I kill the Sneaking Guide? They kept the card in hand, so it's a good one. Next turn, Sneaking Guide threatens to damage with Fisher Wizard. I think so. Could also kill the Wizard, but there's more cheap creatures we'll have to be worried about later. And then the Royal Mage get back beckoning. Could also get Soul Shatter back. I think I should just get more creatures back instead. And I didn't want to play Falconer because that could be awkward if there's an Act of Treason. And then I can get back another Royal Mage. And maybe... Skulker here as another cheap creature I can play out. Hmm. 
And then if they act of treason... Yeah, I guess I should stay, still stay back for one turn. But then next turn I'll probably start attacking. Yeah, Chilling Trap would also be a nice one to get back. I just want to keep looping Royal Mage and Beckoning if I can. Could also just get Chilling Trap. I think I get one more Beckoning loop in. So it shouldn't be that to treachery. I think I attack like this now. Yeah, I mean, that game, we kind of took control of the game at a certain point, and it was just about trying not to lose and at the same time trying to close out the game in a timely manner. But yeah, knowing that they'd already used Kazul's Fury, they'd already used their two pump spells, meant that I think the only card that could deal direct damage at that point was the, the Song Mat Treachery in a way. Unless I'm missing something, I guess a Spitfire Lagak. Maybe could have done it too. It was definitely nice having access to a lot of mana and being able to spend almost all our mana each turn thanks to all the recursion of the Blood Beckonings and Kicker cards. If you compare the amount of mana spent that game with how much mana our opponent spent, there's probably a pretty big gap. And people often say in a game of Magic the person that wins is often the person that ends up spending the most mana, which, you know, there's definitely a grain of truth there. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.